then I'll start it on the other one. I got a little icon that says recording up in the top left, so something's yeah. working. Yeah, so I've got a double recording. Hopefully we won't have the problem we had last week. Welcome to this review session. We're going to go over a few of the things that have been giving us troubles. Um, are not going to get into any reading today as far as I have planned or as far as I know. Um, let's see. So Ward, welcome. Thank you. Good morning. Um, I'm going to share this uh, this PowerPoint presentation that I was working on. No, it says that it, the recording stopped on the software that I have. I don't know why. Let's start it up again. I don't know if it's going or not. There's no way to know. I guess it's recording. All right, really sorry about that. Um, system's been having problems. Um, can you see me at all? Yes. Yes. Okay, great. And the... Jason, when you're talking, the default image I'm getting is the um, static the one, one. Right, the one without my... Uh, without the one my... with your time. Right, you... because I'm using the computer for the, or the telephone for the video. Oh, okay. And uh, I don't really have much choice with that because my computer is shut. Like okay. I'll show you, I'll show you what it looks like if I activate my video. Can you see it now? It's a, no, I see Hebrew review. And yep. a cup of coffee. Oh, something. there I see it now. Yeah. It's just um, it's got wow. a bunch of lines on it, so we're gonna skip that. We're gonna not have my video going on there. All right, so this is a Hebrew review. Um, up to chapter 15, basically. We're going to look at identifying roots um, by their types. Okay, so we have basically two and a half pages, if we order them this way, of verbs that we have covered. Um, let's see if I can make this at all visible here. All right, <clears throat> so Basically, we're going to put, we're going to identify the roots by putting them into this little table here. Okay, like for example, if we have the word haya, we've got a yod a, and we can identify this. This is an interesting verb because it's both he he, which is um, it's a, is weak, and also lamed he. We're going to identify these letters in the roots and where they are in relation to A, I, and Lamed. Okay, so let's. This is really, really simple. It's not uh, not difficult. We're just going to take, for example, this root, this word, Chashav. Okay, we're going to put it here. We're going to say that this is Pechet. Okay, because Chet is here. It's a guttural. Okay, basically. Weak verb roots, weak, radical, uh, weak radicals are gutturals and letters that tend to drop out of the root. So these are the, the weak letters. Okay, the gutturals, Aleph, Hei, Chet, Ein, and it includes Resh because Resh also rejects the Dagesh. And then we've got Vav, Yud, and Nun that tend to disappear within roots. Okay. So let's grab a, a root, let's say this one. And Ward, if you could um, just write it in that table there, I'm gonna give you power here, hold on. Mm -hmm. Okay, you should have power over the mouse. Uh, yeah, there it goes. All right, there you go. So Yud Lamed. Dalet. Mm -hmm. Dalet. How would you this identify? Would be a, it be a peyod. Peyod. Mm -hmm. Why would you choose peyod? Because the yod is under the pay. First, exactly. first root letter. Yeah, and yod is one of those letters that disappears, mm -hmm. right? Fantastic. Um, notice that 
what this means is this root, this root will have, uh, it will do special things where, how can I do this clear? It will do special things um, because that yod is in the beginning. I want to annotate, stop annotating. Still don't have very good control of this system. Um, okay, so let's go with the next one. Um, this one here, Khalam. What would you do with that one, uh, Geo? Uh, yes, I have the. Um, I would have pay chet. Pay chet. Do you want to write it? Oh, there, there you go. Fantastic. Pay chet. Because you've got that chet in the pay position. Um, essentially, all words that are pay chet are going to react the same way. You know? So if you say the future, the future, the imperfect, is going to be yach lom. Instead of like uh, yich, it's going to be yach. Okay, so chashav becomes yach shov, yach lom. It's going to be yach instead of, uh, instead of yich. Okay, that's uh, in the kal. Basically, when you have a root and it has the same uh, position like that, Chet is in the beginning. They're going to react similarly whenever they're when they go into different uh, forms. Um, all right. What about this one, uh, John? What do you what do you make of that? Okay. No pen. Mm. Very sorry. There we go. You have control. Okay. A slow motion pen. That's like all right. Everybody else found out. All right. How do you identify Bacha? Well, the weak letters in the uh, Lamed position. Mm -hmm. So you'd call it Lamed. Lamed Hay. Hey. Lamed, Lamed Hay. Hey. Mm -hmm. Um, very nice. Let's go to the next one. Okay, this is a, we should erase all of those things there. Sometimes this is not the smartest of programs. All right, there we go. Um, so let's go with, uh, Patach. Does anybody know what patach means? Is that to open? To open. Patach, he opened. Okay, so uh, go ahead with that word and break it up into, tell us what kind of root, root type it is. You, uh, I don't have a pen for writing. Oh, I, I, oh, you can do it with your, ping, with your finger, can't you? Or with your mouse? Well, I mean, it doesn't write on the screen here. Oh, I told it to give it to you. Hold on. No, I've got it. Okay. Well, I broke part of it there. Kind of a slow writer, isn't it? Yeah, it's a <laughs> slow, slow, slow motion. Mm. It wants to check that you know, you know, where to join the letters. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. How so would you identify this one? So it's a Lamed Het. Lamed Het. Fantastic. Okay. This one here is Kara. 
Uh, we're going to delete and we're going to say Kara. Kara. This is Lambert Aleph. Lambert Aleph. Okay. Um, what do you make of? Hold on, let's put you back up here. Gio, what do you make of um, this one? Uh, wow. Oh, there's two there. What's going to happen? I would say the Lamed uh, Hey. Lamed Hey, so yeah. Okay, so you're going to put those over here. Uh, uh. Um, actually, the Aleph in the Ayin position doesn't have a lot of effect, so it's uh, really not important. But in the Third position, hey, is very important. Okay. What uh, about the rash at the um, uh, in the pay position? Yeah, it's really it's not going to have much of an effect either. Yeah. Yeah. the The important one is is that hey, in this okay. okay. So we've got the idea of identifying roots, right? The 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 gutturals, and then uh, vav, yud, and nun. Vav and yud. Because they're they're semi vowels, right? They're e, a, o, u. They're semi vowels, so they will obviously they, as vowels, drop out. And nun, because we know that when nun is up against another consonant, with uh, like if you've got this, that 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 will join together as dagesh, right? It, it doubles through assimilation. We know about that, right? That's why it's included. Could I ask a question? Uh -huh. So when you do have, we've got uh, eight letters over to the left here, mm -hmm. you know, from Aleph to Noon. What happens when you have two or three of those in the A, I, and Lamed position? How do you decide which category to go it with? Can, it can have effect from both of them. It can, uh, it can be doubly affected. So okay. like um, NASA. In the future, we would expect it to be yin sa. Okay, yin sa. But that uh, that becomes yi sa. Yi sa. With dagesh. Oops, that should be on the left. Yi sa. Um, let's try to put that in the right position. Yi sa. Okay, Yisa means he will carry, he will lift. Yisa. Um, in the past tense, this will have a different different effect in the perfect. Nasata. Okay, Nasata, where this Aleph is quiescent, and so this lengthens to Kamatz, and this one does not take Dagesh. Dagesh Lene. Nasata. <clears throat> we just know that uh, having the noon in the first position will have effect in the in the future. Aleph in third position is going to have an effect in the perfect. Okay, because uh, yeah, we got that. Um, next, okay, just more of those. We're just going to ignore that for now. Basically, we got the idea of how to ide identify the uh, the roots and that's the most important part at this point okay so we're going to look at these specific words open put down close and pick up like lift pick up um so the first one that we have here is open is do you guys remember the word for open he opened patach. 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 okay so if i tell you to do it it's going to be tach. Okay, tach, open as a as a command imperative. Open, tach. The word for Jason. Uh -huh. Can can I interrupt there? Um, the, uh, the schwa under the hey. Um, mm -hmm. when you were pronouncing it, I don't know if it was my hearing. 
You're going to pronounce it as if it's not there. Ptach. P-T. Ptach. Okay. It is a vocal shva, but you can create the consonant cluster, so they so you just do ptach. Ptach. Okay. Clear. All right. Nope. Hey. The annotation thing in this software is a pain. So put down is sim, sim, okay? So if you can see me, I have my book, okay? I tell you sim et sefel, sim, you put it down. Sim et sefel, let's look at uh, what I'm doing here. Put down the book. Sim et sefel al hashulchan, shulchan is table. Sim et a sefer, sefer, ala shulchan. Okay. The next word is sgor. If tach means open, tach et a sefer, tach, sgor means close. Sgor. Okay, the past tense, hu sagar. Sagar. Okay. Go et a sefer, close. Okay? And the last one, we're going to use the word kach. This is lakach. Lakach means he took. Kach means take. So kach et a sefer, kach et a sefer, meha shulchan, from the table. Okay, it's take the book from the table. Kach et a sefer, meha shulchan. Ani lokeach, I take, ani lokeach et ha et mea shulchan. Bani sam et ha et ala shulchan. So, ptach, sim, sgo, the kach. Okay? The real words for put down is hanach. That's, but this is hifil, we're not going to cover this. Hanach is really the word you would use for put something down. Another word you could use is ten, like latet, no ten, natan. Who natan at a sefer ala shulchan, he put the book on the table, natan. That literally means to give, but it also means to put in the Bible. And the real word for pick up is not kach, kach means take, pick up is harem, harem at a sefer, harem. So that literally means to like put, bring it into the air, harem, to make it high. So are, are these all, in, these um, are all imperatives, yeah. imperatives, masculine singular imperatives? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, exactly. I'm going to clear this. So I recognize two of them easily. The other two I don't. Um, so... Tach and Sim, you recognize? I would have said uh, Segor. Segor. Okay. Segor. Segor. S-G-O-R. Segor. Uh, yeah. Um, so Sim is actually the root of this word. So that's uh, La Sim, to put. But in the past tense, you say Samti, I put, because the E dis it disappears, it's hollow. Samti. Samti, samta. Okay. Kach is actually from lakach with the lamed on the beginning. Lakach. Hu lakach. Okay, so let's so, look at this. We have here a couple. So, so wouldn't the lamed be considered a weak uh, letter also then? It's funny because in this verb, it behaves as if it were a nun. And so it like it also disappears in the future, just like uh, uh, pain noon. Hmm. Okay, so at the top we have uh, sefer, you know sefer. Then this is tach et sefer, open the book. Tach et sefer, tach et sefer, close the book. Sgo et sefer, sgo et sefer. 
And then at the bottom you have the word shulchan. Shulchan means table. Okay. All right. Um, Gio, could you read what we have underneath the picture here? Kaf et hasefer vishim sim vishim otto al hashe shul hashulkan. Al Hashulchan. Al Hashulchan on the table. Tachet a sefer. Tachet a sefer. Tachet a sefer. The sim oto. Oto means it, right? Sim oto al Hashulchan. Put it on the table. You know oto, right? Yeah? No. No? We don't know oto? Okay, that's important. Let's see if we have a place I can write here. I think, there's, I think there's a place in the book where they put the prepositions on both forms of et. Yeah, you know, there is. a direct object and with a with. Definitely. And what is that? So there's a table in there where they show both of them. Okay, so et has two meanings. It means with and it's the object marker. We need the DDOM, direct, uh, definite direct object marker, DDOM, okay? When it's uh, the direct object marker, it normally becomes like O, OT, me, OTO, him, OTA, her. Okay, so oto means it or him. There's no neuter gender, there's only masculine and feminine. So oto, ota. If I say you, what do you think the ending is going to be? Ot, ha. Otcha means you. Ani hoe otcha. I see you. If I'm talking to a woman, I will say otach. Otach. You follow? You remember this? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, we'll go over the endings again for for all of them. Uh, for us, it's otanu, the anu ending, otanu. For you, plural, etchem, that goes from ot to et. Etchem. Most Israelis will say otchem because they just leave it ot, 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 ot. So they say otchem, otchem. Uh, but it's technically incorrect. Etchen. Okay, that's also you. Otam. And otan. Okay. Obviously, in all cases, the O can be Cholambav, O. It can be this way or that way. So you can say Oto or Oto without the Vav. Oto. Okay. It's uh, the same. Does that answer that question? All right. So um, what we said was sim oto al hashulchan. Put it on the table. We say oto because book is masculine. Sefer is masculine. All right. So at the top again, we still have sefer, ptachet sefer, sgorot sefer, ve shulchan table. All right. Here's a sentence. Could you read that for us, uh, uh, John, please? Eish Sefarim Oha Sulahan Shul Shul Khan Shul Khan Shul Ham Shul Ham Yeah, Shul Khan. This is a common word for, for Jewish people because uh, even Jews who don't know Hebrew 
will know the word shulchan because there's a very famous law code called shulchan aruch it's um shulchan aruch that's a rish aruch Shulchan Aruch is like the most famous law code that uh, most most um, observant Jewish families go according to this Shulchan Aruch. Um, there are some communities that go according to other law codes. Um, specifically, the Mishnei Torah is very fam uh, common among the Yemenites, but Shulchan Aruch is the the big one for for most communities. It's a uh, important law code. So, so yesh sfarim al hashulchan. There are books on the table. You see the books there? There are books on the table. Okay. What does this say, Ward? Ah, et sefarah uh, mi hashulchan. Sif recha. Reha, oh, Sif Reha, Et mm -hmm. Sif Reha. Uh, take, <coughs> excuse me, take the book from the table. Okay, yeah, it says your book. <coughs> yeah, your book. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I just ate and I, you know, you get stuff in your throat when you eat. Oh, yeah, of course, of course. So this is Tach Et HaSefer, open the book. And this is Kach et Sifrecha. Sifrecha, your book. Can you see the Cha ending being yours? I do. This is something I'm, I'm drilling myself on, and I just have to, I can get it when I think, but I have to think. We're specifically going to look at this uh, in just a few minutes. All right, I added this one, and I put that the word here means show. Show us. Um, Gio, you want to read this one? Har'e har'e lanu et sifrecha. Show us your book. Har'e, you can see that this belongs to the root ra'a. Ra'a, yeah. Ra'a means so he saw, and hir'e means, or hir'a means he showed. You've got show and see. Because show, if you if you think about it, show means I cause you to see something, right? I cause it to be seen to you. You know what I mean? So right now you can't see my house key on my camera, right? You can't see it. But I'm going to show it to you means I put it in your vision. I cause you to see. Okay, I'm showing you my key. In the past, this is the hifil form of ra'a. Uh, We're going to cover that in the next course. That's not in this course. Uh, but I just wanted you to see that it's connected. Show us your book. Okay, Gio. Bevakasha means please. Be, va, ka, sha. This is a modern Hebrew word. The uh, biblical word for please is uh, is na. Bevak, a, sha. Bevak, a, sha, I will say a lot because it's just a word that I use, but the biblical word for please is na. Na. Na har elanu. Na har elanu. Et sifrecha, Gio. <coughs> metsuyan, metsuyan. Ata heret alanu, heret alanu, you showed us, heret alanu, et sifrecha. You showed us your book. Uh, John, yesh sefer, et slecha, yesh lecha sefer, do you have a book? Yesh lecha sefer? You've lost me. Do you have a book? Yes. Yesh That's not sefer. the answer you want. <laughs> so you say, Yesh li, Yesh li sefer. 
Yes, this is the existence. You see, yes. Oh, I okay. Yes. Yes, lecha means to you, and yes, li means to me. So yes, li sefer. I have a book. Yes, li sefer. So the yes, li sefer. Mm -hmm. Hareli, Hareli et sifrecha. Hareli et sifrecha. Hare. Hareli, do you see? Oh, that, okay. Hareli et sifrecha, bevakasha. So I show you my book. Mm -hmm. Yofi, Hareli et Sifrecha. Tagid, tell Ward, ask him, Yesh lecha Sefer? Okay, Yesh lecha, Yesh lecha Sefer. And then ask him, Hareli, Li to me, or Harelanu, et Sifrecha. You understand? Is John talking now? Okay. Yeah, are you talking, Jason, are you talking to me or to Ward? John, ask Ward if he has a book. Uh, and then ask him to show you his book. So be Hare Lee. But first you want to ask if he has a book. You say, yes, lecha. Yes, Sefer Li. Yes, Lecha Sefer. Yes, uh, like, 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 Lecha Sefer Sefer. Yes, Lecha Sefer. Uh, Ward, Yes, Lecha Sefer. Uh, I am Sefer Li. En lecha Sefer? En I am. En. En Li Sefer. En Li Sefer. Okay, yes lecha Ochel? Ochel? Good. Good. Ochel, yes lecha Ochel? Um, uh, yes. Yes, Li. Yes, Li Ohel. Yes, Li Ohel. Okay. As uh, John asked Ward to show us his food, Ohel. Oh, well, this is. <clears throat> so, Hare Lani. Hare Lano et Ha. Ochel. Ha means the, right? Harelanu yeah. et ha ochel. Mm -hmm. If we want to say your food, it's going to be ochlecha, but we don't need to say that. Harelanu et ha ochel. Harelanu et ha ochel. Okay. Let's see what we got next. Harelanu. And this is. Word, what is this one? Do you know? Shin et ha sefer al ha shul ha han. So it's play shul han. Mm -hmm. So place the book on the table. Mm -hmm. Yeah, put the book on the table. Place the book on the table. Okay, let's see if we can give us some of this. Do you understand where we're going with this? Yeah. Yeah? Okay, so yesh means existence. There is. The opposite of yesh is n. Jason, is, is yesh from uh, a more basic verb or is it just sort of a... Um, it's a particle on its own. A particle, yeah, okay. 
So yeah. ain't is spelled two ways. They pronounce the same. Um, N is what you're going to say. Ein is like the idea of nothingness. That doesn't come out very well. Ein. Ein is like the absolute form. You're not really going to use it. You're going to use Ein. Okay. Ein would be like nothingness itself. And you're, the N is written with the seri? What? The N um, is this one, yeah, N, N is written with Sarah. Mm -hmm. Okay. 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 Uh, is from the verb la kach. He took. Kach is the imperative. Okay, it drops the first and it says kach. It actually, that's not how it's formed. It's formed from the future, which is yi kach, the imperative, the imperfect. Yikach is the imperfect, and it drops the first syllable and becomes kach. Kach means take. Okay, hare, we're not going to worry about that one, but sim is the imperative, put. Put or, let's think how we might make kach plural. Like, you guys put. What do you think we could do to make it plural? What do we normally do with the future? Like if we have you, you put us a, a, uh, a uh, <laughs> you. I can't think of the name. You at the end. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Tikhu, you will take, and we just get rid of T, and it's khu, khu, ke, khu. Khu means take. In the plural. What do you think we do with sim? The future is tasim. Tasim. And which from which we just get rid of the ta. The plural, what do you think the plural is? Tasimu. 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 Tasimu, we get rid of the ta, and it just becomes simu. Simu is the imperative put. So let's look at the plural. Yesh svarim ala shulchan. There are books on the table. Yesh svarim ala shulchan. There we have our plural. Khu. Khu et sifrechem. That's the plural of your books. Your books. You've got the chem, and this is a yod. The yod indicates the plural. Sifrechem, your books. Khu et sifrechem mea shulchan. Take your books off the table. Khu et sifrechem mea shulchan. The plural of hare is haru. Show. Haru lanu et sifrechem. Sifrechem, again, your books. Haru is the plural. Show us your books. Okay, that's from Hare, but we looked at before. And simu, simu et hasfarim ala shulchan, or et, et sifrechem ala shulchan. We want to look at those endings because I know that we only went over them like in one lesson. And so we're going to look at them now. Uh, the first question that I've got here about this is, can you think of differences between words like daval? Okay, that's, uh, it's not segalit, it's a normal word. And segalit nouns like melech and sefer. In the book, they told us that segalit nouns have two historic roots. One for the singular, like sifir, okay? And one for the plural, what, what they would say safar. These are the historical roots, remember that? Mm -hmm. And melech was malk and malak. The plural 
has this pattern like this, which is the same as the vowel. The vowel. It's the same historical roots, the plural. Okay, so let's think of how, what differences uh, might appear when we add endings. Okay. His, if I have the vowel and I say his, his word, I add O. This is near, this is distant, this one lengthens, and this one reduces. Remember these rules? Yes. That the near lengthens and the distant reduces. Devaro, his word. Okay, devari, my word. Okay, so when we're reading the Bible, God says, my word lasts forever, stands forever, devari, devari. Okay, um, let's think of it. How do I, what's the ending for hers? Her. Is it ah? Ah. Okay, so we've got ah. And we've got near and distance, so this one lengthens and this one reduces. Dvara, her word. Her word. Right? What happens with segolets, however? Segolets are a bit different. Their historical root drops the segol and has either e, a, or u, or o. Like short O. Um, so Sefer is Sif Ri. Sif Ri. This is different because here, this is not near and distant. This is a closed syllable that's historically uh, that's historically closed. So, so that's that's the big difference. The big difference is that they have Sif Ri, Sif O. Sifra, Sifra. So that's generally true for segulate nouns? Yep, segulate nouns have that first syllable closed in the singular. Okay, okay so let's look at this. Wow, that's a lot. The singular is on the right, the plural is on the left. Okay, we've got Hasefer becomes Sifri. What is Sifri? What is Sifri? My book. My book. And what is Sifrecha? Your book. Uh, your book, speaking to a man Male. or a boy. Sifrech. Notice that closed syllable? Sif. Rech. A woman. Mm -hmm. You're speaking to a woman. Sif Ro. Sif Ro. His book. Sif Ra. Her book. Sif Renu. That Sif stays closed throughout the entire paradigm. Sif Renu. Sif Rechem. Sif Rechen. Sif Ram. There's Sif Ran for feminine. Okay. Basically, the endings, we should know that chem, it has the kaf of cha, but it's plural, like atem, the m. And chen, like aten, but it uses kaf again, because kaf is the marker for second person when it comes to endings. Um, I'm not sure why we have also the taf like atem and shmartem, but we've got the tem and the chem. These are the, the second person plural endings, right? Not sure why historically they went with tem and chem, but it's the same like ata. Ata has taf, 
but Siflecha has Kaf. It's the same same idea, the Kaf and the Taf going back and forth. The new ending is ours, Sifrenu. The A with He Mapik, that, uh, that He has a dot in it, that's Sifra means her, Sifra. Okay, these are understood basically, you've got them. I know you can't form them, but at least you can recognize them, yes? John, how are you doing? Um, I recognize many of them. Okay, so the I is a Yod, and the Us is Nu, like Anach Nu. The U all has Kaf, Okay, they all have kaf. The he has vav and she has he, like who and he, like uh, if you think of it that way. And the hem and hen has that mem and the nun, like hem and hen. Okay, when we go to the plural, all of the forms keep the yod. See the yod of svarim, they all keep that yod. So in every case in the plural, you're going to have a yod, even if you don't pronounce it. You've got a yod in every case. That is the marker of the plural. You see that marker? Yod, 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 yod. Okay, that's the marker of the plural. So the root, the historical root is safal in the, in the plural, where it was sifir, sifir in the singular. So this actually does have near and distant syllables. So the accent is on the end, this is near, this is distant, reduced, lengthened. Accent is here, near, distant, reduced, lengthened. Accent, near, distant, reduced, lengthened. Okay, that uh, makes sense. Here we go, uh, reduced, lengthened, accent, reduced, lengthened, Accent, reduce, lengthened. Accent way over here. This is the near syllable, distant, distant. This is historically long. This one is reduced and reduced, and we have the uh, resolution of the problem of two shvas next to each other. So it becomes sifrechem. Yeah, this is accent, near, distant, distant, long. Short, short, these are reduced, and this resolves itself. This happens in all four cases here, where they're exactly the same. Makes it easy to recite. So let's go over them. And then we're going to look at Deval in the next slide. You asked about this in the last, uh, in the last lesson, that we go over the endings again. So that's where I'm, why I'm doing this. Gio, you look confused. Like um, I'm, trying, I'm trying to make notes. <laughs> okay, I thought you were confused about uh, maybe you don't remember somebody asking about this last week. So. Yeah, I made, uh, I made some flashcards up this week, you know, using SUS uh -huh. and uh, SUSA. The problem with SUS, of course, I mean, it will help you learn the endings, but the problem is that there's no internal vocalic uh, change because it's just SUS. But it, but it helped me to start learning these endings, though. So. That's true. I think that, I think we originally memorized the masus also. Yeah. Hmm. Um, so this is Sfarai. Okay, I'm talking to you, and I mentioned my books. I would say Sfarai, more than one Sfarai. Okay, your books. I would say Sfarecha. Sfarecha. If I'm speaking to a woman, I would say Sfaraich. Sfaraich. This obviously happens all the time when you use the word God. Elohim is a plural form. Elohim. The structure, the internal structure of the word isn't going to change. This one stays the same, and you just take off the mem and you add the endings. So, Elohai, my God. Elohai. Elohecha, your God. Elohaich, your God, if you're speaking to a woman. 
So there's a verse of the Bible that says, Elohaich Sion. It's your God, O Zion. Like if Zion is feminine, you say Elohaich. Elohav, like Svarav, his God. Elohav. Elohav. Yeah? Mm. Yeah. Eloheha. Eloheha, we say Eloheha. But Eloheha is the proper way. This is a consonant, hey, you notice it's got a vowel on it. Always the feminine, the two FS, two FS, the hey at the end of the word is a consonant. This is mapik because it has no vowel after it. Okay, there's no ah. The vowel is before it, and this is a final consonant hey. This is also a final consonant hey, but it has a vowel underneath it, so you don't need to mark it with mapik, with the dot. So, Eloheha, her god, and Svareha, her books. Okay, continuing this, we have Svarenu. This is like Svarim with the enu ending, Svarenu, our books, contrasted to Sifrenu, our book, one book. Sifrenu and Svarenu, our books. Yeah? When you get to this point, you have the accent here. You have near, distant, distant. It's going to happen in all these cases where this is actually the resolution of two shvas. This is not building off of the singular root. Okay? It's not going back and saying, oh, let's take that root. That's not what's happening. It's just the resolution of of two vocal shvas side by side. Sifrechem. Sifrechem, your books. Sifrechen, your books to women. Sifrechem, your books, or their books when you're talking about a group of people. And Sifrechen. Okay, so we covered all of those. Let's look at the same thing with the word davar. Uh, this should be a lot easier because we've already covered. Now we're going in, into Davao. Davao, it's all, all, in all cases, it's operating off of this historical root. Davao, where we're, if the accent is here, this one lengthens and this one reduces and so on, okay? So, does anyone want to explain to us the singular forms using the rules that we know that near lengthens and distant reduces? Because you can explain all of the forms with this. Who wants to try maybe one of them? The first. Devari. Okay. So accent would be on re, the last syllable. Mm -hmm. And so the ac the uh, bait would be the nearer and it would lengthen and mm -hmm. the dalit would reduce. Fantastic. Exactly. That's all it is. Devari, my word. Okay. Fantastic. Let's look at the next one. Um, John, do you want to tackle this one? Yeah. Uh, the Vareka, uh, your word to. Uh, oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. I actually said John, but that's cool. <laughs> ah, sorry. Okay. Uh, so you have there uh, the Vareka, uh, your word uh, with the accent on. Oh, last. So that's your near and then distant. So um, it's interesting when we have an ending that doesn't have a vowel before it, mm -hmm. um, it it's as if this is a closed long syllable. It's not closed. It, it, this is a vocal schwa, but this isn't, it's not no. counted. It's just, it wants no vowel before that ending. So, it, okay. so this one's know. long and then this one's reduced. I know that's, that's a trick question. Um, because this is, we, we talked about secondary uh, manipulation. Actually, this also has a secondary manipulation. When you find a uh, pause, like lecha. Lecha means to you. Le, to, and ha, you. So lecha, if you find it in pause, it's going to show up as lach. There was probably a period in Hebrew a long time ago 
pre-biblical, where the ending for the first singular was also ach. And so it would have, would have been like devarach. And then it, it just shifted over, it put it on the last syllable, so that's a secondary, secondary manipulation. So this doesn't count as near, instead the next, this, this one counts as near. Okay, kind of funny. But in, in pause, you should expect to see ach as an ending for you, um, which in the feminist ech, devarech, accent near, distant. Okay, uh, what did you get here, John? Devaro. So the accent's on the row. Mm -hmm. What's it mean? His word. His word, yeah, exactly. And so the accent is on the row. The near lengthens and the distant uh, shortens. Fantastic. So once you know these endings, e, cha, ech, a, o, you can really predict how it's going to happen on what's going to happen with normal words, right? It's the exceptions that are, are more problematic. So again, we've got the accent near distant. Here we've got accent. We're going to, it's kind of like with ha, where we're going to count this one as nothing. This is near long and distant short. Because it's another one where there's a no vowel before it, and it wants to have no vowel. For whatever reason, it wants to have no vowel before it, so that, that breaks the syllable, and it's echen and echem. So devarechem, devarechen. Okay? And this one is accent near distant, devaram, their word. All right, by the same rules, same exact rules, we have devarim, where we take off the im, and we add the endings i, echa, aich, av, eha, enu, echem, echen, ehem, and ehen. So let's look at it real quick, and then we'll go on to the next bit. Uh, how are we doing on time? I don't even know. Somebody have time? Uh, it's eight o'clock uh, for me, so we've been on in an hour now. Okay, so we've got about half an hour to go. Um, Deval, we've got Devarai, this is near, it's long, short, long, reduced, long, reduced, long, reduced, long, reduced, how easy. Devarecha, Devaraich, Devarav, Devarea. Once we get into the plural, we see divrenu. Why is it like this? We would expect divarenu, right? What happens, I, th I think, I, sum I surmise, is that they didn't want divarenu and divarenu to sound the same in the singular, divarenu our word, and divarenu our words. So there was a distinction made and it became divrenu. Divrenu our words and divarenu our word. Divrenu. Divrechem, divrechen. This is uh, accent way over here. Long, reduced, reduced. And then uh, a uh, resolution of the problem. Okay, and that's what happens with all of them. Accent, long, reduced, reduced. Okay. Divrechem, divrechen, divrechen, hem, the divrechem. Devar, let's try to do this a little bit from memory. My word, we would add e, and it becomes devari, right? Devari. What would we do with our words? Trying to. Divarenu. Okay, Divarenu, we said was the, remember they just, it seems that they made a distinction by making this one div. Divarenu. 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 And Divarenu is, uh, is a singular. Divarenu. Our, our word. Divarenu, our word. Okay, uh, the next one. 
That's probably the easiest one, I think. Devowel. 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 All his work. Okay, next. Your word, second feminine singular. Okay, so it's words. So we're going to put that yod. How do we say your? So Ziva Raik. Yes, Ziva Raik. Ziva Raik, your words. Okay, your word, singular, masculine singular ending. It's going to be with the vowel. It's, it's singular, so we don't put the yod, right? The yod goes with plurals. Mm -hmm. Put that ha ending, and then we've got our no vowel, long and reduced. Devarcha. Devarcha. Devarcha, your word. Okay. Uh, my words in the plural. We've got the vowel, we have the yod, which means plural. When you add another yod for the ending, it just blends together, right? So it's I, long, reduced. Devarai. Devarai means my words. Devarai hakdoshim, my holy words. Right? Your words with masculine singular and words is plural, so it's like dvarim, we have the yod. How do we get that masculine singular? So the chem? The singular is ha. Oh, sorry. Right. Singular. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Accent here, devarecha. Her words, her words, and his and your word, your words sound the same. Devarecha and devarecha. Devarecha. Her words. Her words. Mm -hmm. Our word. This one's singular. Our word. There's no yod. Deval. How do you say our? No. Devar no. Mm -hmm. Very close. It's a no. Devareno. Devareno. Mm -hmm. All right. Fantastic. That was. That, I think that was a good review. Do you think? How do you feel about the endings? For personal pronouns. Practice will make perfect. Yeah, I know. understand it. I just have to practice. Yes. Good, good. Notice for <laughs> I, <laughs> normally ech or ach, okay. o, in the plural it's going to be av, a or ha. Okay, the plural here is going to be ayich. The plural here is going to be echa. Echa. Okay. Up here it's either going to be e or i in the plural, i. Enu. Or enu, long, enu. Chem. Or echem, ten, or echen, am, an, or a hem, just like this one in the plural, a hem, in the plural, and a hen. Okay? A hen, a hen. That's basically the endings. Once you've got that, you can basically look at the at a noun and 
piece it together and figure out what uh, what uh, what ending it's supposed to be pointing to. All right, we're going to look at a couple of sentences using the verbs that we have here. Patach, he opened. Remember, we had the imper in the the imperative tach. Tach open. So patach is he opened in the past. Patach. Sagal. He closed. He closed. Shalach. He sent. Shal. He asked. This one you haven't had yet, but it's common enough. Mashach. It's not so common, but it's common in our in our minds and our thinking. Because uh, Mashach is where we get the idea of Mashiach. Mashiach is anointed. It's the word that's used to mean uh, the Messiah in later Hebrew. In the Bible, the word Mashiach doesn't actually refer to the Messiah. It refers, refers to anything that's been anointed with oil. Um, normally, it would be referring to HaKohen HaMashiach, the anointed priest. Okay, It's also used for uh, some other things, but this is basically the idea, the priest and the king, HaMelech HaMashiach, the king who is anointed. Okay, This is Mashach. Mashach, he anointed. So we could say that uh, Samuel anointed David and Saul, right? King over Israel. So if we say he anointed David, we'd say Samuel, Shmuel, David. Okay, Shmuel, Mashach. Et David. Okay. This is uh, not the normal word order for the Bible, but this will work for us. Shmuel, Mashach, et David. Samuel anointed David. Uh, I believe that the, the actual form in the Bible would be Vayimshach. Vayimshach. Shmuel et David, Vayim Shach, it's the Vav consecutive. Okay, so we're going to take, now we also have Achal, he ate. We're going to take Patach, he opened. We're going to say Hu Patach, he opened, Hu Patach. And we're going to put some kind of compliment with it. He opened the book, he opened his book, he opened the door, the door Door is delet. This is supposed to be a door. I'm not a good artist. Delet. Delet. So he opened the door. Hupatach et ha delet. Delet. Okay. So I want you just to basically use the sentence. We'll each make a sentence and give a compliment with it. Hupatach. Et Sifro, he opened his book. Gio, what would you add to this? Who patach? What, what did he open? Uh, yeah, I, I used to. Ma hu patach. Mahu Patach, what did he open? Mahu Patach, Hu Patach. How do you say he opened the house? He opened the house. Hu Patach et Habait. 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 Mm -hmm. Habait. Oops. Habait. Habait is the house. Habait. Um, if you say his house, then you do go with that A and it becomes Beito. 
who patach et beito, he opened his house. Who patach et beito. Okay, who patach et abait. John, might, what might you say he opened? Ma hu patach, what, ma, who, him, he, patach, opened. Ma hu patach, what did he open? Ma hu patach. Uh, we can't hear you, sorry, you're on mute. Oop. For mouth. Oh, okay. Um, the word for mouth is pe. So pe. that would be pata et pe ho. Et pe. Who patach et pe? He opened the mouth. You don't really need to say his mouth. In fact, most people in modern Hebrew would not say who patach et piv. Peev is the way you say his mouth. It's kind of funny, but that's how you say peev. Peev means his mouth, and pee means my mouth. But no one says that. Everyone says hape shelo. Shelo means his um, in modern Hebrew. Nobody likes this, but it's a perfectly good Hebrew word. Peev, his mouth. Peev. It's pe with a uh, yod. I, that's just how it works, peeve. There are lots of words where you have to just uh, learn them, and that's one, peeve. Who patachet peeve. If who patachet peeve means he opened his mouth, how would you say he closed his mouth, given right there? Cigar et pee? Mm-hmm. Who cigarette peeve? Who cigarette peeve? There's a verse uh, in Isaiah says that the kings of the earth shut their mouths. I believe it's a sago pihem. Pihem is their their mouth. Pihem. You can see that it means there, right? Because it's hem. Pihem. Okay, they closed their mouth. Um, all right. What would you think that he opened, Ward? Mahu patach. Mahu patach. What did he open? Mahu patach. Mahu uh, patach. Et delati. Et ha delet. Et ha delet. Delet is a segulet noun. So when I add O, I'm going to have a closed syllable. And it's dalto. I was going to do my door. Ah, who cigar it? Dal ti. Ti. Who cigar it? Dal ti. Who cigar it? Adelet shili. Adelet shili. Fantastic. Who patach it? Adelet. Who patach it? Dal to. Adelet la bite. All right, we're going to do now cigar. Instead of he closed, we're going to say she closed. If sagal, sagal means he closed, how would we say she closed? What's the ending for she? Shagla, shag, shag, shagra. Yes. Ah, ah is the ending. This one is closed here, and it's sagra. Sagra, she closed. He, talking about a woman, he, sagra. Who sagal, he sagra. All right, ma he sagra, ma. Ma he sagra, ma he sagra. What did she close? Gio, ma he sagra. Ma hi sagra. Book. He sagra. He sagra. He sagra. He 
מסביבה, את הספר, שנייה. את הספר. היא סגרה את הספר. It's really much easier to write pay in cursive, which is like this. It's like upside down. Um, it's easier to write. I, I really have a hard time writing kaf and then closing it in like this. So if I write it upside down, it's just that's the way, that's the way you're supposed to write it in cursive, and uh, it's just easier to write, so don't be confused. Also, shin, shin is, of, is written like this, shin. So if you see me write shin or pei, can you just uh, forgive me? Uh, he saga. John, ma he saga, ma ha isha, ma ha isha saga. Maha Isha Sagra, what did the woman close? He, my, he Sagra at Hasefer. He Sagra at Hasefer. He Sagra at Hasefer. Um, it's funny in English or in Hebrew, like uh, I understand it's also in Hindi, but instead of saying turn off, you can also say close. Instead of say turn on, you can, so, you can also say open. So I have a light here, a lamp. Ani patachti, patachti et ha'or. I opened the light, patachti et ha'or, patach. Or sagal, sagalti et ha'or, sagalti et ha'or. <laughs> He sagra et ha'or. She turned the light off. She closed the light. He sagra et ha'or. Okay, word. Ma hi sagra? Ma ha'isha sagra? Ma ima shelcha? Your mother. Okay, we can say, what did your mother close? Ma imcha? Imcha? Sagra, your mother. You see, M means mother. M, it's um, geminate. The mem is actually, it's actually the root is Aleph, Mem, Mem. That's the root. So, Imcha, this is a geminate root. Imcha means your mother. His mother is Imo. My mother is Imi. Imi, okay, Imi. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Ma Imcha Sagra. What did your mother close? Ma Imcha Sagra. You would answer with my mother, right? Imi Safra Safra Habayit. Sagra et Habayit. Imi. Imi sagra et abayit. My mother closed the house. Imi sagra et abayit. Fantastic. What does this word mean? That's, that's your way of writing shalach. Shalach. <laughs> Actually, my way of writing shalach would be like this. This the lamed is like this, but yes, that's shalach. Okay. Look, this I really like this, like shalom. Shalom. This is mem sofit mem. Uh, we'll learn cursive at some point, like later on, because I think it'd be it's useful to know. Shalach. Shalach means he sent. Okay, let's look at we sent. If shalach is he sent, how do I say we sent? Shalachnu. Yes, shalachnu. 
שלחנו we sent. מה, מה שלחנו? מה שלחנו? What did we send? מה שלחנו? אוקיי? ג'יו, מה שלחנו? מה שלחנו? שלחנו את האיש. We sent the man. שלחנו... שלחנו את האיש. האיש. We sent the man to L. To the house. El Habayit. El Habayit, El Ha'ir. El Ha'ir, to the city. To the city. שלחנו את האיש אל העיר. אל העיר. וואו, זה יפה. כן. זו הייתה טובה פרקטיסט. זו הייתה טובה סנטנס. שלחנו את האיש אל העיר, או אל ירושלים, to Jerusalem, yeah. אל ירושלים. שלחנו, ג'ון, מה אנחנו שלחנו? אם אנחנו שלחנו, אנחנו כבר שלחנו את המאן, ועכשיו אנחנו לא רוצים לשלחנו את המאן, אנחנו רוצים לשלחנו שלחנו, do you remember him? It uses the preposition at. Is it they? Well, it uses the preposition at, and we add the him particle on the end. Oh, um, et tu? Oh, oto. Shalachnu oto. Okay, le'an, le'an, this is a question, to where? לאן שלחנו אותו? Where did we send him to? לאן. לא means to and on means where. לאן to where. לאן שלחנו אותו? Where did we send him to? Where did we send him to? לאן שלחנו אותו? I've forgotten already the word for city. Ah, uh, city is ir. Ir. The la ir. La ir, mm -hmm. or el ha ir. El ha ir. With verbs of motion in the Bible, it kind of prefers the word el instead of le. It prefers it, it prefers it, but it's not necessary. It could be la ir. Shalachnu oto la ir. Shalachnu oto el ha ir. Shalachnu oto el the mountains. Harim, mountains. Harim. The, the mountains is he. He harim. Shalachnu oto el he harim. We sent him to the mountains. שלחנו אותו אל ההרים. אוקיי? Okay? We're going to learn later on that instead of saying אותו, we can say uh, who on the end. שלחנו הוא. We sent him. Um, שלחנו אותו. We're going to see that you can put this, the endings on verbs also. So for... Har there, if you just said hey har, you still have the segel under the hey no. for har? No. Uh, har is mountain, ha har. Ha har. Uh, ha har, shalachnu oto el ha har. Okay, in this case it's accented. The accent is here, and so this is a ah. Whenever you have harim, The accent is here, im. And then you have an unaccented kamatz with a guttural. When you have unaccented kamatz with a guttural, you get he. Ah, okay. So also, if you want to say to the cities, arim is cities. You have an unaccented kamatz with the guttural. It's he arim, these cities, he arim. 
Hmm. That's okay. very obscure. Most people don't don't observe that, but you that's how it is in the Bible. Uh, in spoken Hebrew, everyone's going to say ha arim and ha harim. Nobody observes that, but it, you will find it in the Bible. Okay, uh, so Isaiah, not Isaiah, Psalm 121, I believe it is. I lift up my eyes to the hills. Esa, I will lift up. This is from Nasa. Esa, Enai. Enai means I, it's ein, but it's plural, a nine, my eyes, a nine, you got the I ending for my. Esa, a nine, el, he, harim. Esa, a nine, el, he, harim, I will lift up my eyes to the hills. I will lift up my eyes unto the hills. Esa, a nine, el, he, harim. That's directly from the Bible. Good verse. Okay. Shalachnu oto. Word, le'an shalachnu oto. Le'an, to where? Where to? Le'an shalachnu oto oh. hapa'am. Hapa'am means this time. Le'an shalachnu oto hapa'am. Shalachnu oto uh, al I'll buy it. Okay. Bait is a special word. A lot of words have that locket of hay on the end. Bait is one of them. Habait means the house. Habait. Okay. When we say to the house, we say habaita. Habaita. Uh -huh. We sent him home. Habaita. Shalachnu oto habaita. The A ah is the two so how did you know where does the directional hay fit what kinds of words mm. pretty much anything uh pretty much specific words for directions like north south east west um to countries or lands so eretz means land you have outsa to the ground, to the land, outsa, outsa. So when somebody bows down to the ground, it says that who mishtachave outsa. Mishtachave is bow, outsa is to the ground, outsa. It even has at some points in the Bible it has outsa knaan. Okay, knaan. Kna'an is Canaan. Altsa Kna'an means to the land of Canaan. Or Altsa Mitzrayim. To the land of Egypt. Altsa Mitzrayim. It's also possible instead to say Mitzrayma. Mitzrayma to Egypt. Mitzrayma. Mitzrayma, okay? Mitzrayma means to Egypt. You're going to have to the north, Safona, yeah. the south, Daroma, to the Negev, Negba. The Negev, the desert in Israel, Negba, which could also mean southward or westward, depending on where you are, or eastward, excuse me. Um, all right, basically that's, uh, that's that. Next, they asked. Okay, they asked, how would you say they? They asked. If Sha'al is he asked, they is. Shalu. Yeah, Lu. You want the long vowel here and you want this one reduced. And what happens with the guttural, it's Sha'alu. Sha'alu. Okay, the. the Shva becomes um, composite Shva. Sha'alu. Sha'alu, they asked. Okay, so they asked. Ma Sha'alu. Ma. This one's a little more complicated. They say, what did they ask? 
מה שאלו? הם, הם שאלו איפה, או what we said before, לאן, to where, שלחנו, we're not gonna make this, we're not gonna make all of these sentences, it's kind of complicated. שלחנו אותו. הם שאלו, they asked, הם שאלו, לאן שלחנו אותו? They asked where we sent him. They asked where we sent him to. Okay? We'll just clear that up. We're not going to play with that one. Because Sha'al assumes that you know all of the question words. Ma, ech, ech is how. Ech, um, efo, where. We have a lot of question words, and we're not going to assume that you know all of those. So. All right. Jason, yeah. I'm going to have to depart. Okay. I'll, I'll be back uh, next week. All right. Sorry this is going a bit long. We'll catch you next okay. week. See you all. Bye. Bye. All right. See you. Bye then. Um, I made a mistake here. Obviously, Saul didn't anoint anyone. It was Samuel. Samuel anointed, right? We said before that Samuel anointed David, but he also anointed Saul. If we say whom, whom did he anoint? We say et me. Et me, Mashach Shmuel. Et mi mashach Shmuel. Obviously, with two people come to mind, right? Mm -hmm. Et mi mashach Shmuel. Who did Shmuel anoint? Et mi et mi mashach Gio. Sorry. <laughs> et mi mashach Shmuel. Uh. Et is the direct uh, object marker, and me is who, right? So et me is whom. Whom. Uh, Shmuel, Mashak, uh, et uh, David. Shmuel, Mashak, et David. Okay, word. Od me, od. Od means more, right? Another one. Who else? Od, od me, Mashach Shmuel. Od me. Mashach Shmuel Saul. I don't know how to say Saul. Yeah, Gam, Gam, Gam et Shaul. 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 So Shmuel, Mashach, Gam et Shaul. Also, Shalom. Mm -hmm. and Achal. Who Achal? We're going to say you ate. How do you say you ate? Achal. What's the ending? Uh, ha. To uh... Achal ta. Chalta, the ending is ta, you, right? You, masculine singular, achalta, right? Achalta, you ate, ma achalta. Ma achalta. Ma achalta. One. Ani achalti Pringles. Pringles. Achalti Pringles. Ah, there's no Hebrew on this. I'm very surprised. The only Hebrew it tells us is high in uh, high in sodium and high in uh, fat. 
<laughs> good stuff. Yeah, so <laughs> uh, Pringles. Um, actually, uh, I Pringles. I haven't yet, but I'm going to eat Pringles. Um, Achalti basar. Achalti basar. Basar. Basar means meat. Meat. How do you say uh, my flesh, my meat? Basati. Basari. Basari. Basari means oh, yeah. my yeah. flesh. Right. So when Adam and Eve, he said, this is now flesh of my flesh. Didn't he say that? Bone of my bones, flesh of my flesh. Adam and Eve. Yeah. So my flesh is Bissari. My flesh. All right. Achalti basar. Achalti basar. Great. Ma achalta geo. Ma achalta hayom. Hayom today. Hayom. The day today. Ma achalta hayom. How do you say nothing again? <laughs> this one is Hebrew is kind of complicated with nothing. You say lo achalti. Lo achalti. Okay, lo achalti davar. Biblical Hebrew is going to say, I did not eat a thing. Lo achalti davar. Hayom lo achalti davar. In modern Hebrew, it's going to say klum. You can say klum means nothing or shum davar. Shum. Shum davar. Lo achalti shum davar. Lo achalti klum. In the Bible, lo achalti davar. Okay? If you say no one, instead of nothing, you want to say no one. Lo ra'iti. I did not see. Lo ra'iti. Lo ra'iti. Ish. Lo ra'iti ish. I did not see a person. It means I saw no one. Lo ra'iti ish. Okay? So the no and the man together is no one. Lo uh, ra'iti davar would mean I, I saw nothing. Lo ra'iti davar. I saw nothing. I did not see a thing. Lo ra'iti davar. Okay, that's the end of the presentation. Um, Again, next week we want to do another review. Um, we, I want to try to close all of the gaps next week so that we're ready to look again at the last couple of pieces of the call verb. Um, any feedback about this week? It was very helpful. Yeah. <laughs> Especially the sentence creation. Very good. Good, I'm glad you enjoyed. All right, let me try to kill the uh, recorder. That was a good sound. And try to kill this one. Pause, share, annotate, stop.